Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, it was really timely from Erin's ask because I just came back from a short conference in Cincinnati from the, the Anderson Center at the University of Cincinnati and Cincinnati Children's, where it was the sort of the annual learning networks conference. So we were invited along with, I was invited along with representatives of the other learning networks that uh, the Anderson Center supports just to come and meet with other networks and, you know, talk about what we were doing and sort of progress and problems and sort of learn from each other in a, a learning network kind of way. Um, so, you know, if you're not familiar, so we're in a learning health system, right? Nemours is part of a learning health system. It sees itself as a learning health system, collaborating with data and sharing with other sites sort of in the state and beyond. A learning health network is, um, you know, a learning health system, but prioritizing the collaboration between professionals and patients or families in partnership to negotiate the research trajectory, to talk about quality improvement priorities, and to sort of drive improvement, care improvement forward together. Now, the reason I'm doing it, and I'm always happy to share these photographs, so my kid is uh, on the in the picture, featured in the picture. Um, my kid Lou is um, 20 some years sort of post Fontan, um, uh, uh, cardiac surgery and has been sort of ticking along really successfully on a single heart ventricle. The Fontan is sort of the, you know, sort of the end stage operation for all a, a few different uh, serious congenital heart conditions, including hyperplastic left heart, which is, you know, what Lou was born with. And, you know, much to, you know, our surprise, talking about sort of 20 years ago, us, um, this is Lou at their job in Maine where they work construction. So, you know, depending on what you thought you know or what you do know about um, single ventricle circulation and sort of serious critical congenital heart conditions, having a construction job is sort of quite remarkable. And, you know, Lou's been doing that job for several months now, enjoying it, sort of thriving, um, you know, keeping up and, and, and managing that kind of the effort of working outside and putting in support beams and building walls and you know laying concrete and whatnot. Um, so you know that's why I'm involved. You know I'm the the, the parent director of uh, the Fund and Outcomes Network. And there are many learning health networks. And um, probably one of the better known ones is Improve Care Now. Um, that's been around since the late 2000s and. You know their goal and most learning health networks have a sort of a fairly specific sort of strategic goal and theirs has always been to increase the number of kids in remission from Crohn's and ulcerative colitis you know again they have clinical partners they work on you know drug and dosing regimens they work on nutrition sort of schedules they work on a bunch of things that are jointly developed in negotiation between the parent, family, patient, stakeholders, and clinicians who are interested in doing that work. So typically, you know, most learning health networks are multi-site. Um, and for instance, in the case of hyperplastic heart syndrome, uh, left, uh, sorry, hyperplastic left heart syndrome, there are like in America, there are about a thousand Fontan operations a year so again it's like the definitive kind of final pretty much final surgical reconstruction of some of these critical congenital heart defects there are about a thousand a year across the country there are 20 some thousand people with a fontan circulation um you know in the united states and probably by 2030, there may be like between 30 and 40,000 and probably no more than 50,000, 60 around the world. So as you can imagine, for any site to really get expertise, um, you know, the, the data set is sort of the paucity of data in any single site. Um, and so, you know, you get these multi-site networks, you know, aggregate data on these comparatively rare conditions, so you get to these bigger study samples that you can do work on, that you can compare outcomes, that you can look at practice variation, because, you know, in heart surgery and in many other kinds of surgeries, one surgeon prefers to do it this way, another surgeon prefers to do it that way, they're happy with their outcomes, they don't necessarily know what the outcomes are of people who do things a different way. 
And so, you know, since about 2006, 2007, um, you know, about the same time as Improve Care Now started, the National Pediatric Quality Improvement Collaborative was set up and they have been working for, you know, all these almost 20 years now to improve outcomes for infants with hypoplastic heart, left heart syndrome. So again, like a narrow scope, initially birth to six months or birth to three months, now birth to one year their sort of strategic, their vision statement. I've been a member of NPCQIC for a number of years too and worked with them in various projects as a parent stakeholder. Their vision statement was, um, I think, something on the lines of, you know, that infants born, that children born with um, hypoplastic left heart syndrome will, uh, I think it was, you know, be eating a birthday cake by their first birthday because, you know, there's a lot of feeding problems with uh, uh, a lot of these um, critical congenital heart defects and, you know, oral feeding was seen by a lot of the stakeholders, stakeholders to be a sort of a feasible quality improvement uh, um, goal. So the National Pediatric Quality Improvement Collaborative has done a lot of tremendous work um, over the over, over these last many years and has you know, has seen this reduction in mortality and morbidity through the practice changes that it's developed. And, um, you know, in this population and the centers that use the, you know, that, that use their procedures and protocols, it's like reduced mortality in the kind of like the first, you know, early stage by 40 to 50%, you know, and that's directly attributable to the work of this organization. So tremendous successes in kind of a, you know, a very, very critical population. Um, you know, it's it's a, a condition, HLHS is a condition that sort of, you know, many clinicians, if they're like a little bit older, when they came through medical training, residency and fellowship in pediatric cardiology, it was considered to be sort of an untreatable, fatal disease with sort of no you know, sort of very little that could be done. Um, and now HLHS is still very serious, still kind of, you know, high morbidity, high mortality. But um, the expectation, the realistic expectation now is that most kids born with this condition will do quite well. Um, and again, a lot of that is to do with the efforts of um, and a, a number, there are any number of learning health networks and collaborations in uh, in pediatric cardiology, but NPCQIC has sort of driven a lot of these improvements. And so tremendous accomplishment for that organization in the early years, but with the extension of life that was sort of realized by their work, you know, with the kind of the reasonable expectation that most kids would get to adulthood and, you know, and into adulthood, um, that we started to see like newly developing problems, you know, caused by the Fontan circulation. It has kind of these insidious effects on other bodily systems, particularly kind of the liver. Um, you know, the, the Fontan Outcomes Network was established just a few years ago to really sort of build and extend on the work of NPCQIC to sort of look at outcomes across the, the new lifespan of people with single ventricle heart disease who had, you know, who had gone through the, the Fontan circulation operation. So again, you know, looking at what we can do with the registry, you know, with that increasing number of individuals enrolled, you get much more extensive data. You can work with sort of, you have a lot of collaborators. It's recruitment is sort of, um, you know, made somewhat easier because you have connections with all kinds of support networks and embedded and active sort of cohort of families and patients who are involved in the work organization. And again, you know, recognizing that different centers have different approaches you can examine that variation to see, you know, what you can learn from each other. Um, you know, we, at this point in the Fontaine Outcomes Network, we have enrolled a thousand subjects and we actually passed that benchmark just a, a week or so ago. So again, a, a thousand subjects doesn't seem maybe that like that many, but we have them across a couple of age cohorts, a bigger age cohort. NPCQFC has five or six thousand uh, subjects in its in its database. Um, we have a thousand. If you think about the fact there are you know twenty twenty five thousand Fontan patients in America, that's 
you know, not a bad number, you know, a thousand of 25,000, you know, you, you can do the math, you're the scientists. Our goal is to enroll 10,000, you know, within the next five years, at which point, you know, we're approaching you know, like 40, 45, maybe, you know, depending on what the numbers are, like, like half of the people in the United States with this condition, which is an incredible kind of power of data that we'll have, you know, over the next sort of 10 years, um, which will enable us to sort of really study in depth and make, you know, really sort of data informed um, recommendations on this condition. This is this is this is the kind of data that we're you know that we're getting into our registry. Uh, I show this to sort of research nurses and sort of the people who are doing this work, and they're sort of you know they start to weep and sweat because you know unrecognized to some extent point about some of these um, you know many research collaboratives that Nemours was involved with. They're an NPCQIC member. We're a member of the Cardiac Center is a member of the Congenital Neurodevelopment Outcomes Committee, PAC3, IMPACT, you know, et cetera, et cetera. There are a number of these organizations, all with different registers, all with different sort of data demands um, that have to be entered into multiple separate registries. A lot of them are collecting the same data. You know, we're recognizing that there's a tremendous amount of room for of collaboration and, you know, finding ways to reduce the data entry burden but you know we are looking to enter this data on all kinds of sort of you know, psychological mental health social as well as clinical variables and you know aggregate such an amount of data that we can decide what we want to work on you know our initial sort of interests um you know are defined here for the fund and outcomes network um you know uh, and some of this is npc qic because we are merging with that registry at some point with that network at some point in the next year and so we are looking for ways to sort of bridge their data into into our system and continue sort of the good work that that organization was doing you know our aim is you know here sort of optimize survival and quality of life across the lifespan for people with single vendor individuals and their families. Um, uh, key drivers are a quality improvement, you know, term. Um, those are kind of the, the areas that we're going to use to sort of examine practice variability and do research. But, you know, we sat a couple of years ago with people from our group and with families who were in attendance at a, a planning meeting conference and, uh, you know, try to sort of map out some of the things that we could, you know, with the data that we were going to use, some of the questions that we could answer. You know, these, these are all sort of feasible topics of interest that, you know, when we get that sort of quality and, and quantity of data, we can start to, to look at. And those were questions that were all sort of developed out of this collaboration and partnership and negotiating the the research strategy, you know, with the, the different stakeholders, um, you know, for instance, right? You know, at the time of Fontan operation, you know, it's a third stage, you know, three stage operation, you know, how do variables in that early hospital experience relate to later outcomes, you know, liver conditions, exercise capacity is a big one that we're interested in because there's sort of emerging consensus that, you know, if you only have one ventricle in your heart, then particularly your kind of like lower muscles, your quads, um, you know, and sort of glutes, they can they can add sort of circulatory capacity. You know, they can act somehow function as kind of a, a pump in you know to improve the the cardiac output in the heart. So you know, what are we seeing? What we'll be able to see when we collect data from across sort of 20, 30 years that's related to kind of practice variation, you know, pharmaceuticals, you know, all kind of, and there's just an amount of like interest in collecting the genetic data. Um, we were working with an organization called uh, Additional Ventures who were uh, looking to build kind of a, a genomic database for hyperplastic left heart syndrome, and they've got Facebook money. So, you know, they're probably going to be all right. 
And, you know, again, out of the work of NPCQIC and sort of the collaboration with parents and families and listening to their concerns and the concerns of adult patients and, you know, adolescent patients, you know, this particular interest in liver health. So one of the first things that FUN is doing, uh, we're currently doing this now, is setting up a liver health work group. So we can, you know, like examine the data we have, see what questions might be answerable out of the data, see what data we need to collect and, you know, like transform the, the registry to get those, to get that data. And, you know, trying to establish what variables we need to define liver health, you know, across the, across the lifespan and what type of surgery variants, you know, what kind of anatomical, you know, differences, um, you know, what, can contribute and what can be worked on to sort of make sure that people's livers stay healthy. And, um, you know, this is sort of the work of the, the whole, the main work of the network right now is to establish this liver health program and establish kind of a exercise, you know, exercise guidance for people with single ventricle heart conditions. So that's my, that's my slideshow for, um, the Font and Outcomes Network. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, you know, we are currently trying to recruit the most cardiac center into this work. <laughs> but conflict of interest statement should have come at the beginning, um, but I'm, I'm doing it now. So uh, happy to answer any questions. So if you have any questions you want to email me, I'm easy to find. So thanks. Thanks for giving me the opportunity, Aaron.